The biggest problem that we face today is a growing human population. We're at now 6.8 billion, and in another 30 to 40 years, we should be around 9 billion people. The reason why urban agriculture is so uh, inviting and is so essential to the future of the survival of the human species is that we choose to live everywhere. We don't just live in New York, we don't just live in California, we live all over the surface of the earth. We live in places where there's no soil. New York City may be the last place you'd expect to find a farm, but Professor Dixon Despommier wants to change that in view of the fact that 50% of the world's population now resides in cities. His idea is for so-called vertical farms, many stories high, situated in the heart of the planet's urban centers. Rooftop farming is made possible by a technique known as hydroponics, growing crops without the need for soil. High up on a roof in Manhattan, this school is teaching the next generation of urban farmers how to cultivate food in cities using rooftop greenhouses. Here we are at the Manhattan School for Children. And what is this? We're inside of a greenhouse. And this greenhouse is growing food. And this food is actually moving from this greenhouse two floors down to the classrooms where it's being consumed by the students who grew it. What could be more direct than a food supply that's linked to your actual educational experience? Uh-uh. It's not basil. That's basil. The stacking system is wonderful, a way to save space. You can arrange these down the entire length of a room. This is, looks like a much better system for human food. As much as you want, it just depends on the size of the building. Plant harvest, plant harvest, and this whole thing rotates. You've got yourself a farm. Look what you have here, you have snow peas. Everybody eat snow peas? Here, watch. Mm. This could be a cooking show. <laughs> this is awesome. This was grown right here. Kids can walk in this room and pick something to eat and go home and tell their mom that they had lunch here. They had lunch at school in their science class. I think that's awesome. One of the most advanced hydroponic greenhouses in the world is located in Belgium. The plants receive all the nutrients they need without the need for soil. Well, hydroponics is uh, derived from Greek. It means water works. And it's uh, well, an NFT system. The system uses a nutrient film technique. So it's a tiny layer of water that runs to PVC tubes and the lettuce is being grown on those tubes. 2.2 million heads of lettuce per year are produced in this greenhouse using the latest in fully automated production techniques. This can be used in big cities. Uh, there's no geographical uh, limits to, to installing the system. We have built systems in Belgium, the Netherlands, uh, United States, Australia, Italy, Chile. of using hydroponics on a rooftop in New York is that it's light in weight. Soil is heavy. Hydroponics is lighter. Many, many roofs would qualify for the hydroponic version of farming that would not qualify for soil-based farming. There's clearly a, a tremendous interest in urban farming these days. Uh, people in cities, certainly in New York City, are very passionate about this subject and I think this is, uh, this is not something that is going to go away. As people become more and more uh, urbanized and cities become denser, the, the, the need for some connection to nature and understanding of where food comes from will only become greater. Architect Gregory Kish has been working in sustainable architecture for more than 25 years. 
We've designed a hypothetical project called the 2020 Towers. It's a 150-story building conceived as a prototype of the very dense metropolis of tomorrow. When we first began this design almost 10 years ago, we were really focused on energy, water, waste, and so on. But soon after that, we realized that we were missing a very big part of the puzzle by, uh, by leaving food out of the equation. And we found that the vertical hydroponic system we developed fits beautifully into this building. It actually allows you to grow enough food so that if you have an office, say, an office space behind this hydroponic window, that you could grow all of the fresh produce that those office workers inside need. The 2020 tower is just a prototype, but hydroponic growing is taking root in New York. Viraj Puri is the co-founder of Gotham Greens. They are in the process of erecting a hydroponic greenhouse on this rooftop in Brooklyn. Gotham Greens is in the final stages of constructing a 15,000 square foot state-of-the-art greenhouse facility that will annually produce over 100 tons of premium quality crops for the local retail and restaurant market. There's literally thousands of acres of unused rooftop space in New York, so it made sense to use a rooftop to try to do agriculture in the city. So we're at the two and a half dam if I could go with well, the space right now. I'd like to think we're somewhat pioneering and we're doing something new. Uh, controlled environment agriculture is practiced on a commercial scale in many parts of the world. Really what we're trying to do is try to bring that into an urban environment and see if we can make it work. There's some virtue to this. Why? It takes less water. We can define the nutrients so we're not worried about contamination. We get year-round production of crops. We get no losses because of uh, insect pests or because of weather-related events. It offers a lot of advantages. It makes the most sense to grow the food where the people live. It doesn't matter how many people live in a city then. Everybody contributes to the solution, not to the problem. Indoor farming. Well, that is it for this edition of Earth's Frontiers. I do hope you've enjoyed the show. If you want to take a look at anything we've done during this series, go to cnn.com slash earthsfrontiers. Until the next time, goodbye.